everybody to the America's Championship. It's time for our second semifinals. The second to last match of the day. Who's going to be joining Amnesiac in the grand finals for a chance to play for 25k in that spot in the World Championship? I'm Frodan. I'm joined by Cora once again. And Raynad did an okay job, so we decided to keep him around. Uh, how are you guys enjoying it so far? I know watching Chess Dude and Nasim get this far, we've been watching Chess Dude a lot, but Nasim's also a player with a lot of personality that I enjoy watching. Yeah, absolutely. Nostum, a quick 2-0 victory in the last couple of days in his matches. Definitely a player that we haven't seen a ton of before. Very popular for his wacky decks, a streamer. But now coming into this tournament and showing that not only does he bring interesting and some unusual decks, but also those consistent tournament decks, and he has the results to back it up. All right, so let's go ahead and meet our players. The first one of the day. Uh, we're going to get to know these players real quick, so we'll just make sure to hashtag HCT, whether or not you guys are tweeting for Nostam or Chess Dude. And with that, let's meet our players. The first one we want to introduce is Nostam. All right, Nostam comes from Long Island, New York, a person that has been known to play the unconventional decks and underestimated for his skills. Uh, Raina, have you been impressed with his play the past uh, couple days? Yeah, he's had very dominant performances, played very well, didn't, didn't see any misplays really at all. I think he's one of the players that's played better in the tournament, although I will say that his draws were very good, so they were easier games to pilot, whereas Chess Dude, for example, had like very close wins, so there was a lot more room for error in those games. Sure, makes sense. And speaking of Chess Dude, he's our second player in the second semifinal. Chess Dude, only 17 years old, consistently in the top five of his age range in chess, which makes sense based on the name, transferring over to Hearthstone and finding that he also has a great mastery of different decks, very experienced in Rogue, bringing Freeze Mage as well, and uh, just really consistently impressing, well, all of us on the desk, at least I can say, for, uh, for his wonderful play this weekend. Yeah, very smart dudes, played very well consistently. Like, the, the games that he won were so easily losable that it's very impressive that he got those wins. Like, that only a very talented player would have won the games that he did. Absolutely. I'm wondering how long it'll take for uh, him to change his name to HS, dude. But I'm just going <laughs> to throw it out there. <laughs> I don't know if you can dump chess quite so quickly after almost 10 years of playing. That seems like uh, maybe, maybe after a win, maybe after a little bit more Hearthstone. We'll, uh, I guess we'll find out. Yeah, I guess uh, over time that might come to be the case here. Taking a look at the lineups, we do see the Druid banned away from Chess Dude, and Nostam seems to have his Warrior taken away. And uh, with that, taking a look at the lineups, do you guys have any early thoughts seeing this? Let's start with you, Raynan. Uh I feel like Nostam might have a bit of an edge here. It's 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 tough to say. We've seen Shaman performing pretty well in the tournament, um, at least at least this particular list. It. I think the bans are kind of expected, but I would give the edge mm -hmm. to Nostum slightly. Yeah, and it looks like social media is also going to go ahead and give that edge to Nostum, looking like maybe a 60-40, not too much. Chess Dude can certainly come back from this. We've seen some great rogue play from him, some great freeze mage. But yeah, I agree that uh, that aggro shaman's really strong, and Nostum showing some really dominant uh, games in the last couple of days. So yeah, anything can happen. Absolutely. So without further ado, let's get ready for game number one between Nostam and Chess Dude. We're going to start things off with Shaman versus the Patron Warrior. And of course, uh, this is the traditional version of the Aggro Shaman, which has Lava Shocks. I know Chalky threw us uh, a nice curveball there. This is the, the version that you're a fan of, right, Raynan? Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's definitely the one that I think is a little bit more solid. Uh, it's very consistent, has a lot of ways to never have an empty hand, unlike most aggro decks, because you have things like, you know, ancestral, uh, ancestral knowledge to, you know, keep drawing cards throughout the mid game, Lava Shock to make up for those heavy overload turns, and still ridiculous early game with Tunnel Trogs or Finley, Totem Golem. It's just an all around fantastic deck. Yeah, I agree. I like this variant more than Chalky's, especially in this matchup. While Haunted Creeper might be nice in some aggro matchups against the Patron Warrior, that Death Rattle's not really going to do anything. Flame Tongue Totem, too easily removed. So I like the Ancestral Knowledge. I like the Lava Shock. I think this variant is going to work out a lot better for Nostum. What's your opinion on its matchup against the Patron Warrior, though? I think uh, that's definitely a much different dynamic than Control Warrior matchups, which I think mm. Shaman might feel really comfortable in. Do you have any opinions on it matching up against Patron Core? The Shaman is very tough against the Control Warrior, especially this sort of hyper-removal Control Warrior we keep seeing. But against the Patron, it's a little bit better because the Patron doesn't have as many ways to build up armor, doesn't generally run Brawl, doesn't have Justicar, but we do see two Armorsmiths in Chess Dude's hand, which is absolutely the key card in this 
this matchup as well as the Fiery War Axe. So with Chess Dude able to remove a lot of Nostum's early aggression, and if he saves those Armor Smiths for some really nice Whirlwind turns, then he could push his health right out of range of Nostum's damage. Yeah, this matchup's definitely better for Nostum than Control Warrior, but when you have a draw like Chess Dudes, it's still looking pretty rough. I mean, coin what into no. exactly the two drops you want, the War Axe to deal with Sir Finley. This is just such an excellent opening from Chess Dude, and the key thing right now is that Nostum doesn't have a two drop yet. If he had a Totem Golem, he would actually be in a great spot, but as is, it's going to be a rough uh, early game for the Shaman deck. Yeah, if you're spending your turn drawing cards or life tapping in this case, you're giving opportunity for Warrior to breathe and develop proactively against you. And that's going to be really difficult because the weapon will threaten a lot of stuff too. Chestu chooses to push out Armorsmith number one. And it is technically safe from like abusive sergeant going into it. Yeah, that's actually going to work out pretty nicely for him. Decides not to go with the Fiery War Axe, probably hoping to save that for something like uh, those Tunnel Trogs, which are definitely higher priorities to remove. Sir Finley on its own, not too threatening. Yeah, that's a super aggressive list from Nostum. Double a Kane Golem, Abusive Sergeant. This is yeah. also a little bit uncommon, but everyone does have their own twist to the, the aggressive Shaman deck. A lot of different ways to build it. Let's see, uh, let's see how the, these Feral Spirits hold up against Chess Dude's start, though. Yeah, it makes a lot of sense, too, because Arcane Golems and are, are usually the Argent Horse Riders of the deck. So it, it feels like it's an okay replacement if you're trying to be pushing even more damage and you're more all-in as opposed to, well, I'm going to have this Argent Horse Rider be really sticky and really annoying. Yeah, absolutely. He's, he's going to opt to run out the Feral Spirit. T that Tunnel Trog pick up a little bit later than you'd like, but still going to have some great use on turn five, potentially, or later. Mm -hmm. Nostum going to be looking for that Doom Hammer really aggressively in this match, though. That's the way that you're going to push through all that damage. He doesn't have Doom Hammer or Rock Biter in hand as of yet, but picking up Life Tap early on with Sir Finley Murgleton makes it a lot more likely for him to draw into it. So that's really the key card in this matchup. Yeah, very important here that that Feral Spirit is protecting Tunnel Trog. It's going to allow it to output a lot of damage next turn with that Feral Spirit, potentially a Lightning Bolt as well. Um, but yeah, this is it's just the power of something like Sir Finley in this matchup. For example, he having access to the Warlock Hero Power essentially makes the Shaman deck play out in such a different way than it normally would. Uh, it just gives you an endless stream of, of gas and burn spells, and Nostum's really going to be able to leverage that going into the late game. Chess Dude is playing the more aggressive version of Warrior, though, so he can set up a pretty formidable board in the mid game and try to punish the, the Shaman for tapping too much. Yeah, that's a great point. The The Warlock Hero Power gives what? it longevity, no. so that way he can manage his mana a little bit better and then still be able to draw two cards per turn, which is huge. A lot of time the Shaman is just going to be a little bit short against decks like Warrior, but maybe not the case when you have Life Tap. Uh, and Chess Dude might have an opportunity to be aggressive, but I don't really see it with his hand right now. Um, it, let's see, he's going for the Armor Smith. At least he's hovering over it. Definitely has to be careful not to let that Tone Trog get out of control either. And you can use cards like Unstable Ghoul to challenge things like uh, the Abusive Sergeant so it can't get past. Yeah, I like this play. He's using his Armor Smiths the most efficient way that he can right now instead of waiting for those Whirlwind turns. But when you don't have those cards in hand, it's better to just use the Armor Smiths while you can, get them on the board. And it's really nice to couple it with that Unstable Ghoul, also protecting the Frothing Berserker. So while Nostum is almost surely going to remove these cards, it's still not a bad turn for Chess Dude. Yeah, Totem Golem draw makes him consider, you know, do I want to develop my minions this turn, save the Lightning Bolt, or do I just want to use the Bolt right away and take out more of the of uh, Chess Dude's side of the table. Uh, if I were him, I, I suppose I would lean towards the Totem Golem, although it is a little bit scary to leave both Warrior Minions up against a deck with things like Battle Rage. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, you're good. that's a really good point. Battle Rage presents a really big threat because his hand size is relatively low. And Patriot Warrior can be in a position we've seen many times where it's just grinded out of the game. It doesn't have many cards, not many immediate synergies. Yeah, kind of an awkward turn for Nostum, actually. Unable to kill that for, or, uh, to kill that unstable ghoul with only one of his minions, ends up putting two damage on the trog. Feral Spirits is nice to have again, especially since Chess Dude doesn't have any more weapons. Uh, but that Armor Smith getting a decent amount of value for Chess Dude already. Yep, Chess Dude desperately wants a weapon here, but just doesn't have access to one. These Feral Spirits and Tunnel Trog, and you know, the follow-up golem, well, the, the golems of both types are going to be very effective. 
Uh, just because he, he doesn't really have a way to, to clear things off the board like these warrior decks we've seen in, in the tournament before this that are just all removal. Be thirsty. That's a good point. Uh, I was evaluating whether or not playing Acolyte or the Frothing Berserker was better. And I think the Frothing Berserker is just better tempo onto the board here. Chess Dude evaluating if he also wants to buff his Frothing Berserker slightly so that way it can't get taken advantage by the Wolf. And hey, Father Berserker is one of those cards where if you don't address it, it can get way out of hand. Yeah, very true. And as soon as Chestu draws, you know, Inner Rage or Will War Whirlwind, oh my goodness, or Battle Rage, um, any of those cards are really going to set his turns into play. So he's he's a little bit draw dependent, but there's so many potential draws that he could get. Even a weapon at this point would be really nice. And his health is so high still oh. that it's very difficult for Nostum to overcome that. Both. Arcane Golems and Arjun Horse Rider. That's something that we don't usually see. Yeah, I wonder if he replaced cards like Lava Burst with the Arcane Golem. Or maybe he just took out some of those other extraneous cards. I know some people always debate whether or not they want to play Jugglers or other cards where they feel like is flexible. So perhaps he just said, I just want to hit face a lot. <laughs> yeah, this deck looks yeah. like something Twitch chat would build, to be honest. <laughs> Austin, type the word charge into the search bar, put all the cards in. Puka uh, Warrior just comes uh, out of nowhere. Now he's just looking Genius. to draw. The draw. Stone Tusk Boar with the Rock Biter finish. Yep, he's just digging for Wolf Rider and the South Sea Deckhand Doom Hammer <laughs> oh synergy at this point. Oh, gosh. Well, Chestu can't actually stop it either. That's the, the unfortunate consequence of everything here if you're in Chestu's camp. Yeah, this is what we've seen from Patron Warrior earlier in the tournament as well when uh, Snail was playing it. it. Once you fall behind on board, it's, it's a deck that isn't that good if you're being reactive. You really want to develop a strong early or mid-game combo, get a big lead immediately with the Battle Rage or a bunch of Patrons, and then just win the game from there. But as soon as you fall behind and another deck takes the initiative from you, it, you don't really have tools to come back. There's nothing like Brawl, there's no late-game strategy like Elise or Justicar Trueheart. Uh, you're really all in on that early combo, and if you can never establish it in the first place, like we've seen in this game, uh, you're just in a really bad spot. Yeah, Nostum was giving Chess Dude an opportunity to capitalize on that extra mana that he gave him, but unfortunately, that Grom Hellscream still a turn off. Gonna be nice next turn to clean off some minions, but unfortunately, not working out here yet. Gonna have to go ahead and give up one of his Grim Patrons without being able to interage or whirlwind. That's not what he wants to do. That Arcane Golem is gonna get a lot of value. That is interesting, considering that the Grim Patron doesn't really do anything except play something for three mana. Well, Chessie's alternative was playing Acolyte of Pain, and then that Arcane Golem would have either killed it or just continued going face, so the Acolyte wouldn't have done anything except cycle. I actually think it's a very good play uh, to show a willingness to use your cards for less than optimal value in order to just stay alive against a deck as aggressive as Agro Shaman. Okay. Well, it's right now approved, but does it actually mean he can have a chance to stay in this game? Chessie playing Grom as removal, hopefully stalls. And I mean, the early game armor that Chester was able to acquire through the armor smith isn't irrelevant. He's still at 24, which is uh, still a ways away from being able to end the game. And Nostum's life tab is going to give him an endless stream of resources, though, and Chess Dude does not have an endless stream of removal. He doesn't have much going on. It's going to be a turn to develop these Acolyta Pains, another turn before he gets the cards off of them. Uh, unless maybe he picks up a Whirlwind immediately. So, that would be huge. Yeah, Nostum's still in a very dominant board position. At some point, Nostum is going to have to look at removing that Grom, though. If he leaves that on the board for you know, even one more turn, that's going to represent too much damage for Nostum to deal with. So he can go ahead and pressure on board at this point, but huh. well, there's Dr. Boom coming into Chess Dude's hand. Dr. Yeah. Boom, does that... What if Chess Dude just goes face? Yeah, what if he can yeah. go aggressive? Uh, let's, let's count, though. See, how much damage does Nostum have on the backswing? He's got two charges of six damage. He's got 11 on board, so that's 6, 17. Yeah, 17 right now. He can pick up pretty much any any of his burn spells would do it at this point. But he only has two mana available because he'd be overloaded for one. So he can't life tap and then play everything. Yes, because so, he is overloaded to right. eight. So a rock biter or like another lightning bolt mm -hmm. would probably do it for Nasta. If, if, assuming this is the plays, right? Yeah, Crackle would do it. Um, the lightning, bolt, the lightning bolt would buff. Yeah. I mean, we've seen Chess yeah. Dude make aggressive plays when behind before, but Dr. Broom it gives you a hell of a board. He might just take out the Arcane Golem from the board as well. He's going to go for the Tunnel Trog. He's respecting that that is effectively a four-power minion if Nostum has one of his overload cards. It's tough. Looks like he is leaning towards a defensive play here. Yeah, Chess okay. Dude armoring up to 22 is actually pretty safe. 
Um, does not know what Nostum has in his hand. Doesn't know that there's two arcane oh, Doom Doomhammer coming into hand. How much damage is that? Seven, that would have been nine on board. If uh, he ended up keeping the tunnel drag around. Mm -hmm. Nine on board, another uh, eight from hand this turn if he played the Doomhammer and the Arcane Golem. Yeah, that was definitely one of the better pickups for Nostum, but at this point he recognizes the chest dude has a huge board and he's just trying to make sure that he has enough time to get all his Doomhammer damage out of his hand before he loses the game. Well, he definitely has a lot of damage as well. Um, chest dude also ran out of Armor Smiths, so. I yeah. think his only defensive card might be a Dread Corsair if he has it. Possibly or if he's running a, a second Unstable. Don't worry, uh, potentially a Shield Block. The Patron Warriors usually don't run it, but it's not not the most unusual thing that we can see. Battle Rage. Okay. Uh, he's yeah. going to be able to draw two cards. So the issue here from the Warrior is that now that both Armor Smiths are gone, there aren't usually any more Armor cards that Patron Warrior runs. There's no Shield Blocks, there, there's no Justicar, there's no Shield Maiden. So there isn't much Chest Dude can draw to in order to be in a better position. It might even make some sense there to Battle Rage for one card because you need the Dr. Boom damage to end the game before dying. Mm -hmm. But it would not have paid off. He can armor up to 12. Nostum has four from Doomhammer and four from Arcane Golem. The Rockfire would settle it. It would. Chest dude's still looking for answers here. He definitely needs to armor up, though. I don't think he wants to play that Shredder and skip the ability to gain two health. Nostum also can tap into the lethal, and he still hasn't hit a single Rockbiter. It feels almost inevitable at this point. Yeah, if those Boombot outcomes were just a little bit different for Chest dude, he actually would have gotten seven damage there, and Nostum would have been in a losing position. Oh, Both of those wait. cards pretty useless for Nostum at this point, though. Yeah. And Flame Juggler feels sometimes like a liability. 7, 10, 11. Six damage generated from Chest Dude. It's possible if he draws two cards. Ooh, I don't like it's that true. play at all. If you're Nostum there, I think you just start Kang Golem the Doctor oh, Boom. Man. In case of Taunt. A Whirlwind gives him two draws here. Have we seen Sludge Belchers from Chest Dude? There's have. a Taskmaster yeah. for two. Slam. Hmm. Well, you can oh, Taskmaster your your Acolyte to draw again. Yeah. And then and death, death Deathbite. Deathbite. Deathbite would be lethal. All right, let's see. No we way. haven't seen a Deathbite yet. A Belcher's also good. A Belcher's oh, great. Man. That's really good. I mean, if you can't win the game, <laughs> I think that's the second best option. Wow. Yeah. Another reason Nostum uh, might yeah, wanted really, to go for that Arcane Golem really last turn. You really trade with Dr. Boom there. It's the difference between giving Chest Dude 13 attack and 6 attack. So he has life tap. He's going to... Like, Nostum, even though he's the aggressive deck here, he has inevitability. The longer the game goes, the more likely the aggro deck is to win in these days. Uh -oh. So trading into Boom would have been a lot better. With so now he needs an Earthshock into a life uh, rock fighter. With double arcane golems, I don't think he's got Earthshock, especially now that we're seeing Flame Tongue. Oh, and another no. Flame Juggler. Four dead draws in a what row. What happened? That was supposed to be Nostum's game. And now that Chester takes is game number such one. A turnaround. I think 100% of the games Flame Tongue Totem has been drawn this tournament, the player has lost. That Seems card like uh, Chucky gave us some false information there. I mean, it's, uh, it's, it's not a bad card, it's just... It's sort there, of been like Kazan Mystic. Yeah, I mean, there's a reason that the popular decks in Hearthstone have these refined lists, right? There are millions and millions of people playing millions and millions of games. So over all of those games being played, deck lists get refined. So the most common version on ladder tends to be like the most consistent, I guess, for a number mm -hmm. of reasons. But it doesn't mean it's wrong to play different lists in tournaments. It just means like sometimes you get draws like that where, you know, you have four bricks in a row and you just lose a game that you were so far ahead in the whole time. Yeah, it felt like because he had that Doomhammer too, it's like you said, the inevitability, meaning that he'll probably hit into those burn cards or eventually as he drags out the game and Warrior can't pressure him anymore. He's got Acolytes on the board after you kill Dr. Boom. Uh, in this case, getting that Whirlwind was a huge draw too. Uh, being able to draw deep into the deck and hit Belcher, it was three cards away. So without it, uh, Chess Dude definitely needs some fortune there. But at the same time, once again, being able to pull himself out of a tough situation has been the story of the event for Chess Dude and Nostam has to turn it around. Speaking of which, we got a chance to sit down with Nostam and talk to him about what it was to prepare for the tournament. This is what he had to say. It's my in-game name's really cute. It's just gonna be my last name backwards, and uh, it was some pretty clever stuff. I am a streamer, and I think my stream is actually different than most people's stream. 
I'm just hanging out in a call with friends while playing the game. So it's like more of a casual environment where people just come and watch me and my friends. I initially got a little bit popular because I played against Trump on his stream and I was playing these like just absolutely stupid decks. Ooh! Got him. Uh, a lot of times I feel like people don't give me enough respect just because I have that reputation as someone who just plays a lot of dumb decks. I definitely want to show people that I can play at the top level with the rest of them. The first tournament that I played in was a TESPA event, and up until that point I was just taking the game very casually, and I ended up qualifying for it. So after that point I thought I could you know, travel because of this game, and I began to take it a lot more seriously. And I've been around in the competitive scene for a while. I've been one of the most successful open tournament players. I've qualified for, this is my third land now, which is pretty rare for someone to say that isn't like a pro player. I'm one of the most consistent open tournament players, and this weekend I plan to take home that first big tournament win. Nostam down 0-1, but there's plenty of wiggle room in the best of five to completely shake it off and turn it around. Cora, when, when you look at the Shaman, uh, sorry, you look at the Warrior being eliminated, is, mm -hmm. that, is that something that we expect based on the lineup, or is that a really big win for Chess Dude overall? I think it's a pretty big win for Chess Dude. We haven't seen Patron perform too well in this tournament at all. Definitely Control Warrior being the better Warrior deck that we've seen, okay. and he was so far behind for so long, so being able to use those Armor Smiths early to get that, uh, that armor very quickly instead of waiting for those Whirlwind turns, which he just didn't end up getting, I think was really smart on his part, and he pulled out a really close win. Yeah, it's kind of the story of Chess Dude's tournament, just always in these abysmal positions and just barely managing to squeeze out a win over and over again. That's just a sign of a very good player that, you know, he's able to to win games from this losing position. And the legend of Chess Dude continues. Game number two underway. No stay, I'm going to stick with the Shaman deck against the Freeze Mage. Uh, and Shaman... Shaman decks are very aggressive, and Freeze Mage do excel at beating aggressive decks, usually. However, I do feel like uh, Shaman also has a lot of ways to put the damage on very quickly. For example, how does a Freeze Mage stop Doomhammer repeatedly over turns from smacking you in the face? Uh, do you have any thoughts on this matchup, Raynan? I know you've played a lot for both sides. Yeah, I, I think Nossum is pretty heavily favored. Right? You can't interact with Doomhammer if it's ever drawn at 16 direct damage. Uh, so Chess Dude's going to have to have a very defensive draw in a lot of ways. It's, I, I think we saw one heal bot from him in the Freeze Mage mirror, I want to say, uh, that he played. Not two mm -hmm. heal bots, though. So he's hopefully looking to draw that. He's going to need some scientists early to find ice barriers. And I mean, some like th that's not the only victory condition. There's a chance that Nossum just doesn't find a Doom Hammer. That's another very realistic way Chess Dude could win. But yeah, overall, I would say the Shaman's heavily favored. Yeah, I agree. Nostum has a great chance in this. The aggro shaman versus a deck like the Secret Paladin, which comes up against Freeze Mage. Secret Paladin is so very board dependent, and while the aggro shaman likes to get damage on board, they have all of those burn spells to back them up, and then their weapons are just so much more effective. I really like this aggressive Doomsayer from Chess Dude, though. I think that's a really nice play. It feels like you don't get a chance to play it otherwise, just because you know how aggressive his deck is. He's playing Arcane Golems, right? It's like, at that point, you can get, interpret that uh, Doomseer won't get much value. Plus, it gives you an opportunity to develop, and he did pick up Ice Barrier, a pretty valuable card. Yeah, I mean, the only real answer Nossum could have had there is Earth Shock, so definitely a very safe Doomsayer, exactly what you want, dealing with a Coin Totem Golem. But that Tunnel Truck pickup here from Nossum is a really big deal. It's a lot better than just playing a Feral Spirit. His, his curve before that draw was going to be Feral Spirit into Lava Shock Golem. Now he's going Tunnel Trog Golem into Feral Spirit, which is way more damage. That's representing, you know, a seven attack hit rather than a four attack hit in the next turn. I think we're actually going to see some really nice use of the Arcane Golems in this instance. Charge Minion's really effective against the Freeze Mage because you can't uh, preemptively freeze charge minions. So Nostum, just another way that he's going to be able to push past uh, the freeze mages board freezes and board clears and be able to push for that last little bit of damage. Chess dude going to set up that ice block. Uh, nice to have preemptively. We don't see any mad scientists as of yet, so might as well play it, get it out of the way. Antique Healbot also in Chess Dude's hand is going to be really nice to clear off some of this damage, but Nostum already presenting a really big board only on turn four. Yeah, Ice Barrier here actually makes things a little bit awkward for Chess Dude. He would actually love to get this Healbot down on turn five, 
use the stats to maybe start dealing with some of Nostum's board. But yeah, now he's in a position where his hand doesn't really do anything and he doesn't want to play this heal bot because Ice Barrier is, means he's still at 27. We yeah, might it's even, true. We might even see some defensive Ice Lances here. And I think you you have to play very scrappy in this matchup. You can't wait for the Ice Lances to combine with the Frost Bolts to get the game ending damage. A lot of times you're using it to stall things. Even in more mid range matchups, like you use it to stall like a Dr. Boom or you know, those other cards are really aggressive towards you. Yeah, I'd like to see Chess Dude throw out those Ice Lances on Tunnel Trog right now. You just you can't be taking that much damage every single turn. Yeah, he's piecing together that burn damage a little bit too soon. The Alexstrasza is certainly something you're going to want to see later in the game, but maybe even for a defensive Alexstrasza on your own face when you get down uh, too low in health. So not not useful right now. He'd rather have seen those Mad Scientists, Arcane Intellect, uh, Acolyte of Pain would have been really nice. And no Frost Novas or Blizzards in sight, so this is going to be really difficult for Chestu to deal with. He decides to double Ice Lance that Trog. Just going to go ahead and kill it right out. This is one of the reasons that running Pyroblast does have some risk with it. I mean, it is a card that kind of guarantees you have the damage in your deck to close out a game, but when you draw it this early, it's just so clunky. Yeah, it's a really good point. People have replaced Pyroblast with other cards. Um, you know, some people even opting to play Maligos sometimes and just say, I want to go for that kind of burst damage instead of Pyroblast. Uh, but it's like you said, we are introduced with some of these situations where you draw the top end of your deck, you're stuck with it. And Freeze Mage doesn't have these games very often. Just so happens to be in a matchup where it's a little bit tough to stabilize very early on. Yeah, yeah. Definitely a matchup where you would much rather uh, have your early curve. In other matchups, more mid-range matchups, control matchups, you can afford to draw some of those big cards early. But in this one, it's, it's really difficult to come back from a position like this. Mastam's waiting for the AoE to come out. He's highly expecting of it. He doesn't want to just throw out all of his minions for no reason. Waiting to see what he can do after uh, his opponent plays something like Flame Strike. Yeah, Chesty's not doing much of anything, so Nostum recognizes, you know, it's very likely he has Flame Strike in hand. Uh, these Arcane Golems are also cards you, you really don't want to play until the mage is up to 9, 10 mana already, because it's. Freeze Mage is one of those decks that can take a huge advantage out of getting extra mana crystals early. That's also a good point. In fact, if you played that extra mana crystal and was unable to kill, then you gave the Alex Straza an opportunity. Uh, and then maybe Chess Dude actually had some way to kill his opponent through having that second ice block in hand. So Yeah, Nostam hasn't picked up Doomhammer, which is you know the card we said was kind of key in this matchup, but his hand is still just a huge pile of damage. Start piecing some of this together. I think Nostam might actually have enough damage this turn to go ahead and pop that block already. Two from Lava Shock, three, four, five, six, seven on board. He can Arcane Golem, Rockbiter, and Abusive from hand. Yeah, yeah. It, it does look like he has that ability to go pretty much all in on the board. And um, Nostam definitely wants to do that because popping the ice block means that your opponent's in a situation where he needs to have the second ice block or he's dead. Yeah, Nostam's seen most of Chestu's deck in those slower freeze mage matchups that were played earlier in the tournament, so he, he's aware that there isn't going to be more healing from Chest Dude, you know, aside from this Alex. But yeah, ice block gets popped. Chest Dude has the option to drop Alexstrasza, but that is so much damage. Oh, facing man. you from that board. Alex Straza against the board that has 13 power. Yeah, he, it, it is worth pointing out, though, he does get the ice barrier here, right, off of Scientist. So technically, right. he'd be at 23. Mm -hmm. uh, it is a little bit unfortunate for Chess Dude. I would say that he drew the ice block. He would rather pull that off of Scientist. But this is uh, really the only line of play you have, I think, is that Alex. I think not so. Much, not much you can do following it up, though. You can go ahead and Alex draws it defensively. Like you said, you get the eight from the ice barrier, so you're most likely safe. We see four in Nostum's hand. Not going to be enough to close out the game without a draw of some sort of burn spell. But how does Chess Dude follow that up? I mean, he's got, he's got that ice block, so he is safe for two more turns, we're thinking. He has, he has the, uh, the, 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 the myth that many players fall into of, I can believe that I'll top deck the answer. I think a lot of times you're in a situation where you get the the, the AoE. You know, Nasim has pretty much only a couple cards left remaining, so if he can't get the damage in for the final pieces, uh, you never know. Maybe Chestu can stall out long enough. Gonna be hard, though. Yep, that healing totem's been putting in some work for Nostum, but he, it is kind of stopping him from playing both charge minions this turn. 
he's going to have to consider whether it's worth committing more to the board, becoming a little bit more vulnerable to AoE, or if he should just hold on to these charge minions, play them later. It's a hard th point because if your opponent just Frost Novas, then you're still not doing anything, so do you just hold on and not do anything at all and then charge anyways, which you would have gotten the damage the previous turn? It's a hard question. And I think he just chooses to play the Arcane Golem, get the most damage impossible, put your opponent in a tough spot, and that way you can draw damage to potentially end the game as well. No. Chester really suffering from that lack of early card draw. We haven't seen any Arcane Intellects, uh, no Acolyte of Pains. Picks up a Frostbolt, that's, that's not bad. Um, well, the card Chestiude was looking for here is definitely Frost Nova. If he, if he dropped that, it would have eliminated any possibility of charge minions from Nostum. Uh, but it would stop him from attacking with Alex. But yeah, in this position, you pretty much have to play Ice Block. It's mm -hmm. the only way you survive. But then how does he deal 30 damage without getting killed himself? It's a really tough position to be in. He's got a decent amount of damage. He's got some survival techniques, and he's got the Alex Straza on board. But in this case, Feral Spirits really doing a great job of blocking all that damage. Well, uh, from this position, Chess Dude has only one chance to try and flip it is if your opponent doesn't draw any damage after your ice block uh, gets popped. Chess Dude goes to work, but it's a tall order. Nostam, I mean, pretty much the rest of his deck is just going to have damage. It's true. Does Chess Dude have access to another Ice Barrier? I think not. I think it's all four secrets yep. already yes. out of the deck. I believe all four secrets are out, and I also believe the heal bot's been used, therefore there has no there's no ability to heal at all. So Chess Dude needs to Oh man. He needs Nostum to misplay here. <laughs> Ch Chess Dude. He needs him to make a mistake and uh well, he, he needs this horse rider to be on the table and get Frost Nova. Because if, if Chess Dude can freeze this charge minion and Frost Bolt Nostum in the face, then he can maybe lock out Lethal for a turn. But yeah, Nostum's gonna smartly hold on to that horse rider. And no oh. amount of freeze is going no. to. Blizzard coming in a little uh, too late. Yeah. I was thinking the AoE, but you're right. The horse rider stops it. That two health. Man, if it was a little bit lo longer, you never know. But Chess Dude can't pull a miracle out of this one. And Nostam's aggressive Shaman will just get over the hump because that one was pretty close. Yeah. So close to losing this one. Wow. Again, you see, like, Imuni's so far behind. Chess Dude gave himself a, you know, a line of play to win. Potential top decked Fireball could have won that game if uh, Nostam didn't have the, the Horse Rider. But yeah, Nostam's going to take that win in a matchup he's pretty favored in. Yeah, it would have been devastating for Nasim to come back if he lost that game where, honestly, it's pretty good for him. Not to mention that he also has decks like Druid, which he wants to match up into that Freeze Mage too. So while that Freeze Mage deck is is done for now in terms of it it lost, uh, Nasim's not done with it. He wants it to queue up into some of his other bad, better matchups as well. Yeah, I really liked that turn. Nostum actually popped the block the first time, went, in, went all in on board, uh, did basically did exactly what the aggro shaman has to do, and that's just sort of go for it. And he was rewarded because Chess Dude's hand just did not have what he needed. Chess Dude leading in the polls still, but uh, Nostum having tied up the series 1-1. That's right, man. Uh, Chess Dude looked like he was down in the polls, but he's right back in after... I guess people saw the polls and they're like, wait, that, I want to cheer for Chess Dude now. And of course, Nostam's friends and fans are also cheering him on. Uh, again, I got to commend the poise that both these guys are showing uh, in the semifinals. It's it's very easy for your, some of your first tournaments to kind of uh, buckle under the pressure. But Nostam, he's been competing for a while now. Uh, he's definitely showing that he can stay calm and collected here. Going into game number three, uh, it seems like with these classes remaining, it's still anyone's game, though. Yep, for sure. Yeah. All right, going into game number three. Let's see what's in store between Chess Dude and Nostan. We're going into Rogue versus Druid. A, a, a debate that will last until the ends of time, <laughs> along with, you know, scientific and political theories of stuff. But what what is it about this matchup right now that makes people debate whether Rogue or Druid is, f is so favored one way or the other? Uh, Rogue players are really big fans of Rogue, Dan. So in their eyes, Rogue is favored in every matchup all the time in every metagame, which is, in my opinion, why it's a little bit a little bit of argument back and forth on which deck is favored. I, w I will say that I, I think that Druid is overall across all matchups the stronger deck, but against Rogue specifically, it's much, much closer. 
Uh, the opening hands are going to matter a lot. The fact that Nostum has the coin here and Chestu doesn't is a really big deal that favors Nostum. Rogue really wants the coin. Uh, there are certain cards like Deadly Poison plus Blade Flurry that can be very, very effective against Druid. You know, helping deal with Druid of the Claw, Shade and Axe Ramus, things like that. But uh, overall, I, if I had to give the edge to somebody, I would. I got to give it to Druid just because it's Druid. Druid is one of the classes where Sap is really, really effective against because the Druid is looking to play one large effective minion per turn, and unless they can innervate and get out two minions in one turn, uh, the Rogue can really just tempo them back, use Violet Teacher to get out a lot of those uh, apprentices and, and you know, push back the Druid to the point where even the combo won't deal enough damage to kill them. So, uh, Nostum, not with a great hand right here. I do agree that the Druid is slightly favored, Rainad, but when you don't have Wild Growth, when your earliest minion is a Keeper of the Grove on four, yeah. not looking too strong. Seeing the opening hands, I'd like to take it all back. Uh, no, no, just... <laughs> no, no, I absolutely agree. The Druid, uh, Hero most of the time. Two is, uh, it's the sign of a, a druid that, that has misplayed this game by not drawing wild growth. That is uh, definitely a card you, you're going to want in a matchup like Rogue, where it's so important to play minions that are above curve to be able to keep up with their efficient removal. Yeah, we uh, we have a popular saying. We call it face druid because you're often using hero power on turn two to hit the face. Inspire druid, man. This is what, <laughs> this is, druid? That's this a is new what one. Blizzard uh, oh my gosh. With Let's the just Grand start tournament. putting some uh, some lowly squires in your druid decks. That uh, way, the hero power on turn two uh, not quite so bad. Wonder why we don't see more tournament medic in this deck. Uh, explain why uh, druids get punished a lot when Cannibal Hunter gets played against it, but. <laughs> Yeah, I guess the uh, backstab SI, really powerful. It's like you said, Cora, I really like what you're pointing out, that Druid can't really develop and remove. That's been an internal problem for it. In this case, Swipe is okay, but you give initiative right back over the chest, dude, and you're caught just playing catch up the rest of the game. Yeah, I don't know if I like seeing that backstab out of chest, dude. What it, what it did is it essentially gave him a much stronger board against Piloted Shredder, but it made him lose a backstab against, uh, against the Swipe, which is a very likely play for Nostum to have, because his hand sure doesn't have Wild Growths. So I, I really would have liked to see him hold on to that backstab, especially because he has Azur Drake. And uh, yeah, if Chestu did end up playing that Shredder, he could have gone Azur Drake, spell power backstab, and mm. cleared it. Nostum getting rid of those swipes very early on in the game without seeing a single Violet Teacher come out. So he's going to have a really hard time dealing with all those apprentices later on. We do see the mind control tech in hand. That's that's sort of one way to counter it a little bit, but not the strongest. You definitely want to see one of those swipes for later on. But unfortunately, sure. not going to have that now. Well, you know, Chess Dude has a couple of interesting options as well. I think that Drake still presents a big threat. Your opponent just used two swipes in a row. And also, he's coming into some big, powerful turns. Uh, you really want to get a good preemptive minion out here. One of the questions that I was also going to ask is, uh, you know, Druid versus Rogue also is heavily dependent on if cards like Harrison Jones exist in the Druid to remove weapons. Because so I know for a long time, players were saying that Rogue was good if you could just sit on a Blade Flurried weapon mm. and Druid can't ever develop because you're afraid of getting uh, completely wiped down. Yeah, Emperor Thorson is the maybe single best card that Nostum could have drawn in that position. He was really far behind. He already has the combo in hand. Like, this is the kind of card that can help you sort of begin to catch up. Definitely, and Chess Dude sure, certainly can remove it. Vibe Teacher SI is very clean, builds up a reasonable sized board, but uh, it's not impossible for Nostum to come back. No, not at all, but Nostum does have that Doctor Boom, which is really difficult for the Rogue to remove. We've actually seen Chess Dude sap a couple Doctor Booms today, only to have them be played right back out. So those Boom Bots really presenting a problem. Also, Ancient of Lore. Nostum is never going to run out of fuel, and occasionally, even that Ancient of Lore for health against a Rogue is pretty useful. Yeah, Chess Dude huh. is aware of the mind control tech from Nostum so from uh, earlier matches, I believe. So he's considering using Sap because it does effectively kill Emperor Thorson. If you Sap it in this case, Nostum just not going to have time to play it ever again. But I like this, this SI. Just develop a stronger board. Ooh. Oh, prep and oh, wow. Sap. Yeah, the most aggressive possible play you can make. Two swipes have been used. So he's capitalized on the fact that you can't deal with it that easily. And he says, if you want to play mind control tech, you're going to have to risk missing development on other big, powerful minions. And that's a lot of power represented on board. Six, eight, 12, 15. Yeah, super aggressive play from Chess, dude. And Nostum would love to hero power one of those uh, apprentices to make his mind control tech a little bit better. But he's a little bit too far behind to do that. He's going to go for the defensive force of nature. 
Okay. Choosing not to play that mind control tech. Doesn't want to be left unable to clear off the bigger minions, so decides to sacrifice using the mind control tech instead, going for the clear. I actually really like this play. I think it's very smart. Yeah, I agree. I think uh, from his losing position, that's that's really your best chance at kind of hoping that Chess Dude has a handful of spells and can't develop much more. So definitely a solid play from him. Yeah, and assuming Ch uh, Chess Dude didn't have a follow-up, like you were saying, with only spells, Nostam has a very good hand. Like, it's some of the highest quality minions you can ask for out of Druid. So, from here, Chess Dude evaluating if he wants to attack with this dagger at all. Yeah, he realizes that his hand is double Blade Flurry. He's doing the math right now. If I attack now, and then I Blade Flurry attack next turn, and then I Blade Flurry again. He's wondering if he can save a turn on killing Nostam if he starts swinging with his weapon every single turn. Yeah, Nostum, however, never going to be running out of fuel. Has that Ancient of Lore for some health. Dr. Boom also presenting a problem with those Blade Flurries because those Boom Bots can, I mean, they explode. They can do some damage to these minions. They can uh, not necessarily push Chess Dude's health really anywhere. Chess Dude is very safe at this point, but he's just having to fight against this huge hand from Nostum. Nostum is going to drop Dr. Boom here, and he actually... He's going to hero power, recognize that he's behind and that mind control tech is going to have to happen. He's kind of hoping Chess Dude plays into it because it's one of the ways he can actually come back in this game. It's 15 damage right now. Yeah, I really like that deadly poison pickup. He, if he wants, uh, can clear off the Dr. Boom, hit face and blade flurry, uh, run in those two apprentices first to finish it off, but yeah, he's very close to lethal already. What's difficult, though, is that Nostam does have ways to be defensive. He can uh, Ancient of Lore heal and still hero power and put himself out of range. So, yeah, the thing here is Chess Dude has some unintuitive plays he could make as well. He could just not play that poison, attack the Dr. Boom for so three, you know, run an apprentice in and then blade flurry, and then you're kind of you still have your other flurry if you draw oil. Okay. You still have a combo enabler, and you have two minions for the boom bots to hit instead of just the belcher. Sure. It's more likely your belcher lives. I, I don't mind that play either. You already saw one, one Force Nature Savage were used, so I don't think you're too afraid of that kind of stuff. All in? No, not oh, all man. in. Well, this, this is, is very much all in. He's mm -hmm. just going to not kill the boom at all. It's the most aggressive play he can make. Ooh, that, the fact that that's four damage is a big deal. Yeah, that's definitely a nice opportunity for Nostum. Picks up the Sludge Belcher. Uh, also has Druid of the Claw for an option. He's definitely going to need to taunt up in some form. Yeah, I guess the Boombot damage, because he doesn't have a convenient removal and he doesn't want to use his own hero power uh, and his own health pool to remove it. So I guess the Boombot somewhat a consequential here. Nostum wants to heal. He's scared. I would be too. Chess Dude actually had, I think, 16 damage last turn, and uh, Nostum had 18 health, so he was already so close to dying at this point. You have to play it a little bit safe. Yeah, Nost yeah man. Nostum really had the option there to hero power the Belcher, but he realizes. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, how... That is uh, 6, 10, 12, and 12 exactly. Eviscerate bails him out again. Oh, my goodness. Chess Dude with the clutch top deck yet again. His rogue deck coming through for him right when he needs it, too. That's insane. I can't believe it. Once again, just by the skin of his teeth, taking such a crucial game here with Rogue against the Druid, giving his Freeze Mage two chances to win and move on to the finals. Yeah, he definitely had a couple turns to draw that. Still had good draws like Sprint, but yeah, timely Eviscerate lets him close it out right away. Not have to worry about the huge wall of taunts Nostum was about to set up the next turn. Yeah, absolutely. Nostum likely going to be able to get a win with his Druid against that Freeze Mage, but uh, that Warlock could be a little bit more difficult. I like it. You know, establishing dominance <laughs> by being really aggressive. It worked I, out. Yeah, at that point. I, I love how how aggressive he was able to be in that situation. And once again, recognizing, like, these are the cards that I have. Uh, this is the best case scenarios. Uh, and, and maybe I don't have the time because, you know, I sap Thors and I know what kind of a fate is awaiting me uh, with a card or with a handful of, like, seven, eight cards from Druid. Really well done once again, and this this kid is special. I like it. 17 years old and one game away from going to the Grand Finals. Yeah, absolutely. We've really seen some excellent rogue play from Chess Dude. He really recognizes when he has his outs, when he needs to take them, and it's, it's worked out for him pretty much every time. I mean, it's gotten him here, and it might be getting him to the Grand Finals. Yeah, fantastic. Now, the Freeze Mage still has the Optical of the Druid, 
and the the warlock deck. It's uh, it's. Demon Handlock, I believe, or maybe Arena Warlock. I just know it's not Zoo mm -hmm. uh, from Nostam. So it's going to be really difficult to try to overcome that last hump. Freeze Mage still has uh, the ability just to lose due to awkward draws. Sometimes just getting the all the burn or all the removal, no, none of the draws. Yeah, and Awesome's definitely not out of it. Those are two matchups that are very winnable for him. And, uh, you know, even, even Drew is, like, very tough for Freeze Mage to deal with. So uh, it's still really anyone's game, but that was definitely a key victory there for... Uh... <clears throat> Sorry, I'm completely for chest zoning dude. out for chest, for chest dude. dude. I'm, I'm you are so blown away. So okay. he, he's so by impressed by that eviscerate top deck that Raynad is rendered <laughs> speechless. It's okay, Raynad. Early we call are too. times, man. Early call times. <laughs> it's, it's a rare sight that you don't have. Uh, you don't. Raynad doesn't know what to say. That's right. Exactly. Listening so, to myself talk definitely one of my favorite hobbies. But uh, <laughs> such today. such beautiful words. All right, so let's go into game number four. Then no more waiting. Raynad's out of words. And maybe Nostam's out of time. We'll see if he can turn it around, starting with most likely Druid versus the Mage. That's where we're predicting and feeling. Although it's Conquest, you have to win with everything. So let's see if the rubber can meet the road. If Nostam turns it around, he'll send it to game five. And it's going to be the Druid up against the Freeze Mage. Nostam wanting to tie up this series. He does have to win with the Warlock as well. But at this case, you just want to go with your better odds. And, and it's the Druid. Yeah, that wild growth pickup from Nostum is definitely going to make this game a lot more promising for him than the last. That's exactly what you want to see in the opening hand. Chesty's hand's pretty solid too, though. He's got some early game card draw. He's got that Nova Doomsayer combo, and it, it, I wouldn't be surprised to see to see Chesty keep all four cards here. Uh, one one key uh, interaction that the matchup tends to uh, hinge on is the Frost Nova Doomsayer. If it manages to go off and the mage can follow up with a threat like Emperor Thorson or just an Antonitis on an empty board, even if you don't get fireballs out of it, then the mage will usually win. But if the druid does have Keeper of the Grove for that Doomsayer, then usually the druid's favored. Yeah, it's night and difference between the sorry night and day difference between Doomsayer being able to activate. You know, be right in his prediction, being validated, so to speak. Oh. That's right. Bringing that's right. in the new expansion. We, we, well got, we, got, we got to remind people that, you know, Whispers of the Old God is on the verge of being released. Yeah. And oh. six or seven weeks or so. That's true. <laughs> so uh, with that, Chess Dude, he's got some of the pieces. You know, Alex draws it early in hand. Oh, wow. That Emperor, this Emperor is, Thorson. This is like the best possible Druid opening Nostum could have gotten. It is a turn three Emperor Thorson into a turn four Druid of the Claw into Lotheb whenever he wants. And that is just such an incredibly powerful opening. Perfect curve. Emperor Thorson's a card people don't really talk about uh, when when talking about like the good tools Druid has against Freeze Mage, but it is one of those minions that just has a constant effect mm -hmm. on the board, like, like Ragnaros if it lives. So freezing it doesn't really do that much. That's a card that chess you kind of has to fireball, so this is fantastic opening for Nostum. Yep. Uh, the only thing that Nostum would like more would probably be ways to keep his hand size full. Uh, and if he ends up picking up other innervates, he's not going to be able to piece it together. So it's not... Uh, we've seen Druids go all in on Thorsten sometimes early with two innervates, and then they just draw like Savage Roar. They don't have anything else. Uh, yeah. For Nostum's sake, he's looking for cards like Ancient of Lore and Azure Drake to follow it up. A very what? aggressive Ooh. doomsayer from Chess Dude. How do you know? Oh. He's genius. Psychic? Something. What a play. I yeah. mean, Are is, you serious that right is now? Crazy. Raynette, Raynette's smiling. <laughs> Two un unprobable things just happened right now. Speechless Raynette and smiling Raynette, all in the span of five minutes. Yeah, that's a really interesting line of play. Uh, I mean, Chessy recognizes, okay, now someone wants to develop the board. Maybe he plays Piloted Shredder next turn. Maybe if he's really lucky, he has Innervate Thorson. This Doomsayer, regardless, is probably going to get Keeper of the Grove if I play it later. Let's not even let's not even try to get lucky and dodge the Keeper. Let's just run it out on a turn where I know it's a good tempo play. And he did draw the Keeper, too, which is, yeah. you know, you can't be too results-based in Hearthstone, but... If there's a time where you could feel good and use results to justify it, now is the time. Chess dude is sick. If, if I were Nostum right crazy. now, I would be I would be claiming sniping. <laughs> <laughs> Probably would. I mean, if they weren't sitting right across from each other, who knows? Yeah, Nostum's still going to be able to play this Emperor down pretty reasonably on turn six, and he's getting a really nice hand from it. Force of Nature is really nice. Keeper of the Grove still going to be useful coming up later on in the game, even if just to silence one of your own minions after a freeze. So it definitely put him back a couple of turns, but still not in a bad position at all. 
Yeah, Nostum recognizes attacking face there is the right play. Chestude has a lot of cards in hand. Letting that Acolyte live means that Chestude can use his hero power to draw an extra card, but he doesn't have the time to do that, and Nostum mm. knows it. So he's just going to get the four free damage while he can. Well, there's still... I mean, he's not out of the woods. Like you said, the, the fact that there's a lot of good follow-up to this could mean that there's a lot of outcomes based off how the Emperor Thorsand leads the discounts to. So what is Chesu going to do? He can draw more cards. He can also try to fish for more removal. He still technically can remove the Thorsand by parting ways with the Ice Lances, but it's still a costly, costly removal. Yeah, that might just be something Chesu needs to do. I don't really see another way out of it. I mean, as good as that Doomsayer play was, there's, there's really no... He's just still so far behind because of uh, just how powerful Nostum's draw is. He needs to make very aggressive trades to just not fall further behind here, I think. He but, does uh, pick up that Frostbolt, meaning that he could go ahead and Frostbolt Coin Ice Lance to get rid of the Emperor. It's extending a lot, but if you're really afraid of that second reduction, it's kind of what you have to do at this point. Yeah, you could argue that he should have thrown away Coin there because Nostum is going to count the cards in Chess Dude's hand. He has the opportunity to really punish him here for having the full eight. You can hero power the Acolyte first, kill off a minion with a Keeper or Living Root and just make Chess Dude overdraw. A very early Lotheb coming out from Nostum. He recognizes that he's got a nice board right now. If he protects that Emperor, he's gonna have so many more options in the coming turns. Sure. So goes ahead and plays that Lotheb now to protect the board. Yeah, he has Force of Nature to follow it up. No need to play the Living Roots immediately. And just passes it back over and says, if you can't do anything about this, I'm going to pop your Ice Block. Yeah, great play from, from Nostum. That's just Ooh. the power of ramp. Look at his board so early in the game. Yeah, and despite the fact that uh, Chess Dude had maybe a glimpse of hope with some of the cards that he had in his opening hand. Nostam's pressure from Druid is just so strong. Again, this is one of the most more lopsided matchups in Hearthstone, so really hard to overcome it. But whenever you do see the Freeze Mage beat the Druid, man, if you're the Freeze Mage player, you feel extremely good about yourself. Absolutely. But yeah, I mean, Nostam just drew all the right pieces all together at the right time. And it's just, it, it, there's not many ways you can play it to really have a chance when that happens. When everything comes together for Druid, that's really just the power of the class. You you get the ramp with the right threats, and you're favored against almost anything when all that happens. Chess dude trying to prevent this amazing board with that early Doomsayer. Doing a nice job for the first couple of turns, but unfortunately his hand's so heavy with spells, just can't do anything when it's locked out by this Lothab. So, Force of Nature with the hero power is just enough by itself. Nostam can sit on Living Roots and Keep of the Grove both as direct damage sources. And Chess Dude is pretty much just out of options. He can't even stop the, the next wave without using Frostbolt on his own Mad Scientist. Yeah, I might have liked to see him use Savage Roar there instead of the Force of Nature, but at the end of the day, it's not gonna matter too much. Yeah. And uh, kind of just going through the motions at this point. Chess Dude's gonna take his time, see what outs he has. But there's not too much he can do from this position. Ice Barrier doesn't do anything against Keeper of the Grove and the Living Roots. Uh, like you said, he can go ahead and Mad Scientist Frostbolt his own Mad Scientist for the other Ice Block, but that's only delaying for one turn. It doesn't look like he has any realistic outs that could lead to a win for him later on in the game. Yeah, he might. his best bet might be to bank on his opponent not having direct damage and then just freezing everything, trying to be really optimistic for it. it how, how, you can't even remove everything on the board, let alone be able to survive the damage here. Yeah, that's the issue. I mean, once Druid gets that lead and Ice Block's popped, you can tread water for a couple turns as Mage, but there's no way to really ever stop the pressure from Druid. And there's only so many Frost Novas in the world. It's true. In this case, zero. Yeah, uh, in this case, it, zero, yeah. Chess Dude's world. <laughs> He's gonna go for the Coin Ice Lance. Try his best to see if he can stall, but I mean, Nostam knows he can just use the direct damage. And that's gonna wrap up game four very, very quickly. Ooh, Nostam going for the extended BM. All right, Chess Dude able to pick up a nice win with that Rogue, top decked Eviscerate for the exact lethal, but not in this case. Nostam is gonna tie up this series once again, two to two, and we are going to a game five. All right, so it's gonna come down to uh, whether or not this Warlock from Nostam can go up against the Freeze Mage. I know, I know a lot of people like that matchup.
You know, Saddle from who also casts with us pretty frequently says he loves this matchup that's mm -hmm. coming up on the screen. I'm pretty excited to see it because I do believe it's pretty skill intensive. A lot of decision making to be uh, to, to be had throughout the entire game. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. The uh, tech card is going to come into play for Nostum quite a bit. I mean, have we have we seen anything like Kazan Mystic from him earlier? I think enough Kazan Mystics this weekend to, to last a lifetime. <laughs> I believe we saw Kazan in Bill and Sky High's decks, but not from Nostum. Okay, so that that's definitely going to work in Chess Dude's favor. That's not a card he has to worry about, but still a lot of great tools in the Warlock, things like Lotheb, all that. So uh, healing, Reno, mm -hmm. uh, if it is that variant. Was it Handlock or Reno? Uh, I believe it was the Reno Warlock, but I think we also saw some D uh, the Handlocks. Yeah, and I just did. remember that Nostam was playing a mind game a lot of the time. I, I was in the middle he of... He said he was bringing Zoo, but he ended up bringing right, Reno. exactly. That was what it was. So it's a Reno Lock. I was in the middle of interviewing him, and he was like, yeah, I totally played the mind games mm -hmm. of uh, whether or not I, I was being like a zoo lock and the, the, the not a zoo lock with Chalky and then all of a sudden he surprised him. So uh, Chalky even even to the turn two when he's right before Nostam Tab was expecting a zoo. Yeah, worked out in his favor. But, uh, you know, at this stage of the tournament, Chess Dude's aware of exactly what kind of Warlock it is. He's going to mulligan accordingly. Try to play the right macro game plan to have enough damage to close the game out. Okay, so can Nostam complete the comeback and go to the grand finals? It's only been his third land, but he's been definitely impressing a lot of people. Or will Chess Dude, ba basically being the, the Cinderella story of this tournament, be the one to upset the establishment? Let's go to game number five and find out. Looks like we do have the Reno Jackson in hand already for Nostan. That's a pretty good start. Keep that for sure. Everything else, though, is debatable. Yeah, we also have the Emperor Thorson for Chess Dude, which, honestly, Emperor Thorson in both of these players' decks is probably one of their best cards in this matchup for both of them. Uh, for Nostum, it's it's this minion that Chess Dude has to deal with that continues to provide value and is like, freezing isn't really effective against. Uh, but, yeah, for Chess Dude's Emperor Thorson, it's it's one of the ways that he can actually get enough damage to get through all of Nostum's healing. If he can get an Emperor Thorson on Antonidas plus a couple cheap spells, that's going to provide him enough fireballs to actually close the game out. It's a good point. You only can heal so much past the Reno Jackson. Uh, Reno's a full re restoration, but cards like Healbot, you need to combine with the uh, Brand Bronze Beard, which you might not be able to piece. And outside of that, uh, you. You just need to make sure that the Freeze Mage can't push you down from 20, 21 health. Yeah, Saddle was actually saying earlier that in the beginning, uh, players thought that the Freeze Mage was almost unwinnable in this matchup, that the Reno Jackson Warlock can heal so much that for the Freeze Mage, there was just no way for them to win. But combined with the Ember Tharsan, all the burn spells, if the Freeze Mage keeps the Reno Lock around that sweet spot of like 20 health, then the Reno Lock never really feels safe. They don't want to play Reno Jackson because they don't feel like they're getting full value from it. But at the same time, the Mage can just go ahead and burn them down without them ever healing at all if they're not brave enough. So it's really that kind of game of chicken again. Am I safe enough? Do you have the damage in hand? And that Emperor in Chess Dude's hand is going to play a huge role in this. Yeah, that Dr. Broom's an excellent pickup for Nostum as well. It's a minion that's very problematic for Freeze Mage. They, they don't have a lot of ways to kill it effectively, and it just threatens so much damage every turn. But yeah, for the, the mid game, early game from the, the Reno deck, Nostum is just going to be developing Ooh. a couple weak minions. Oh, that is not what you want to see if you're Chess Dude. Yeah, two secrets early on, especially when you have a Mad Scientist out on the board. Interesting that he chooses to ping instead of developing one of them. Yeah, I think the key is to just continue to threaten your opponent and force him to heal and use cards like Reno Jackson before you have Alex Straza. That's one of the keys to the matchup. And, you know, Arkan Intellect to follow up with uh, that play is probably one of the best he can, he can ask for. Pinging yeah. the face every turn still is pretty important. Yeah, Chess Dude was very, very concerned with pinging the face in his Freeze Mage matchups yesterday, and it end up, ended up working out. Nostum, slight positioning issue with that Shredder, but likely not going to cause a problem. Uh, he's going to actually go ahead and just play that Drake on the other side of it, meaning that everything looks A-OK -okay on that board for now. And then Chess Dude, like we said before, double Ice Block in hand. He does have the barrier set up, but not the hand that you want to see when you're using that Ember. He's got double Frostbolt and Ice Lance, but no Fireballs in sight. Yeah, I think Nostum's pretty comfortable in knowing that there aren't really Cone of Colds in Chess Dude's deck, so you can feel free to put the big minions next to each other. It's all those small details that kind of give you edges in matchups like these. Sure. It yeah. definitely can feel that way. And Chess Dude hit Emperor on a pretty decent amount of burn cards. He has the opportunity in one single fell swoop to do 17 damage with Frostbolt, Ice Lance, and Pyroblast. 
Um, so now it comes down to the phase of whether or not he can legitimately threaten the Warlock before he plays cards like Alex Straza. Or maybe, maybe he has to pivot, depending on how things go. Yeah, yeah good picking... healbot coming out from Nostum. He doesn't want to overextend onto the board too much with a Dr. Boom, because he can't really deal with a Frost Nova Doomsayer play that effectively right now. So he's just going to do that to kind of force Chess Dude to play Alex Straza before he uses Reno to heal. Yeah, and picking up that fireball off the top of the deck for Chess Dude uh, before the Emperor Tharasan was really nice because it gave him that burn that he really needs, even with the two ice blocks in hand, which kind of aren't going to do much. Now he has options for later on in this game and can do exactly what the Freeze Mage needs to do in this matchup, which is keep that Warlock around 20 health and burn him down. Yeah, and, and it gets, it's, again, it's going to be pretty dependent on whether or not Chess Dude can pick up some of those key cards. Right now, Nostam is going to do the very similar thing uh, throughout the entire game. Build up pressure on the board, try not to overextend, be mindful of the ways your opponent can AoE you down. Chess Dude's even willing to, again, spend his turn here pinging. Is he going to freeze the board, or is he just going to hold? Uh, it's interesting he's choosing not to develop Ice Block. He, he's doing this... The only edge I can see, there's two advantages. First of all, he has one more spell he can play if he gets Archmage Antonidas later in the game. Uh, the second advantage is there's one more card in his hand that Nostum doesn't know about. So Nostum has less information to play with. Kazan oh. missed it coming into the hand of Nostum. That's three of them that we've seen actually in this tournament. And I think this is going to be the first one that is actually going to work out. I don't recall seeing it in Nostum's deck before, but here it is. I believe when Chess Dude played Bill yesterday, Kazan Mystic was uh, another reason why I won. But I, I don't think it was like a consequential mm -hmm. thing. I think it was like it was going to win anyways. This might be the big swing. Uh, that Nostim has. However, it still doesn't mean the game is guaranteed over. It just means it'll be very difficult. Also, Nostim could hypothetically... Okay. Uh, it's like he could hypothetically just steal it right now and do something very wrong. But... Yeah, Kazan Mystic's one of those high-risk, high-reward cards to include in your deck. We see it in tournament environments once in a while because it is very unexpected, very swingy. If you do manage to queue Kazan Mystic into a Freeze Mage matchup, it makes it much, much easier to win. Maybe Chess Dude saw the Kazan Mystic in an earlier game, and that's the reason he's not playing Ice Block. That's also a good point. That could be it. That actually makes quite a bit of sense. And At this point, I wouldn't put it past the guy, uh, <laughs> where I've seen some of the stuff that he's done. And Chess Dude is still in a point where he needs to figure out what he wants to do in the coming turns now that he doesn't have Alex Straza. He's got uh, a lot of burn. If you can tally up everything, he's got 26 damage. But I think he knows that it's just optimistic, to say the least, to start burning immediately. Because even though Warlock's on 26th, there's a lot of ways they can heal besides cards like the heal bot. There's Farseers, there's Siphon Souls, Reno Jackson. Uh, even the fact that he has the coin still, if you push him down too far, he can still use Draxxus as potential heal. Yeah, ideally for Chess Dude, he, he would Pyroblast and then not die on the backswing, and then that would allow him to threaten lethal the next turn. Right now, he's looking at 17 points of burst from hand, including his hero power. So that's kind of the magic number going forward that he's trying to get Nostum down to. Chestude going to go ahead and use the Frost Nova without a Doomsayer. Uh, it's nice. It means that he's able to really take the most advantage out of that Accolade of Pain on the board. Nostum with a very full hand and no silence at this point. And Chessy is looking to potentially develop his Pyroblast, just send Nostum down to lethal range, and then not die on the counter swing. That's that's really the what he's trying to set up right now. I okay, well, uh, Nostam trying to figure out like this is not exactly the easiest turn here. How do you try and continue to develop without overextending? And also, you're at full you're at full cards, right? You have to play mm -hmm. something. You can't just dump. I mean, you can just put the coin out if you don't want to do anything else. But it feels a little bit of a waste. Yeah, the coin isn't going to be too, too useful in this matchup. Nostum choosing to just dump that mind control tech. It's going to die to flame strike. It's going to be useless with Blizzard and Frost Nova. But at this point, the last thing you want to do is overdraw. So go ahead and get that out of the way. And uh, Chess Dude, like we said before, looking to set up a two-turn lethal. But Nostum with that Reno Jackson in hand, very unlikely to uh, fall for that. Yeah, he's right. desperately looking for a flame strike at this stage of the game. Have we seen one in his deck yet? Flame strike, I believe, I believe we have. To do. So I that, believe we have. That would be an excellent tool to just buy him a lot of time in this case. Nostam has a Dr. Boom to follow up, but 
Chessy's just trying to find some way to deal with this Warlock pressure on the board right now. Well, it doesn't find another Do Frost Nova, which would make the Doomsayer live. And now he's in a position where he's staring at a lot of damage. Looks like 21 just on the board alone. Mm -hmm. So, you can't ignore it. Chess dude going to have to set up that ice block, but so luckily is... for him, Nostum has a full board. Yeah, it's not it's not lucky at all, actually, Cora. This is uh, very deliberate. There's a reason that uh, Imp Gang boss is the mini he decided to trade into. He's trying to lock Nostum out of this Kazan Mystic, but he knows it's still unlikely to work because Nostum has access to you know so many ways to kill his own minions. Yeah. So the Hellfire or even the uh, the Demon Wrath will be able to wrap it up, and assuming Nostam can see it correctly, he's got this on lock, so it looks like he goes for the Demon Wrath. Nostam's not going to mess up on this one, he's been playing excellently so far. Follows up with that Kazan Mystic, going to steal the Ice Block from Chess Dude. And that's going to wrap it up. We have our second finalist from Long Island. It is Nostam completing the comeback against Chess Dude, and has a date with Amnesiac in the finals. <laughs> Chess yeah. dude with some really amazing play there. Like you said, Raynad, trying to lock down that board, go for the lethal and making sure that Nostum couldn't play anything but Demon Wrath or Hellfire would have been outs there. And Nostum taking that match three to two. Yeah, the odds are really stacked against Chess dude from the beginning there, knowing that there is a Kazan Mystic in uh, Nostum's deck. And that, that did end up being the, the deciding factor. But I mean, he did everything he could to play around it, held on to Ice Block as long as he could, uh, made that Hail Mary play at the end where he locked Nostum out of his own minions and, you know, said, you need to have. Uh, a way to deal with your own minions and an answer for my lethal damage. And yeah, Nostam ended up having it, but still great play from both players. Yeah, fantastic series. I'm so glad I went to game five. And once again, uh, a great job to Chestu for finishing top four, but a bigger congratulations to Nostam, who is in the grand final securing top two spot here. We're going to go to Robert, who's standing by with our winner, Nostam. Congratulations to Nostam. You've made it to the final match where your opponent Amnesiac waits. Did you ever expect to get this far in this tournament? Did you expect to get out of the top four and make it to the final match? I was definitely confident coming into this tour tournament, so I'm definitely happy that I'm able to go as deep as to the finals. Right, into the finals you go, where you are going to face off against, as I said, Amnesiac. He is coming in here, prove, wants to prove that he is the best player in Hearthstone. Is it at all intimidating to go up against him? I mean, he's, he's definitely a confident kid. But uh, I'm just hoping that we have a repeat of the 3-0. Right, so uh, we saw in that video your background was sniping in against uh, famous streamers. Did you ever expect when you were doing that back then, when that Molten Giant hit base for 20 damage, that you would make it this far and possibly be fighting for a seat at the Hearthstone World Championship? I mean, it's pretty crazy to think that I'm here just because, you know, I didn't think that I would be taking this game this seriously. So it's definitely a fun experience overall. Right. Is there anyone you want to thank for preparation? Any of the stuff that got you to this point? Uh, yeah, the, my biggest practice partners are Frank, our lead paint, Muzzy, and Yotzflow, and they really helped me out with the lineups and just teaching me the decks, and they're a big reason why I'm here. There you have it. Not necessarily one of the players you were expecting to make it to the final match coming in. A lot of big names. But Nasim came in here and proved that he is one of the players who deserves to have the chance to compete to go to BlizzCon later this year. Thank you very much, Rob. And once again, congratulations to Nostum for moving on to the America's Winter Grand Finals. What a high level match that was, Saddle. I mean, uh, just from the get go, you could see that both these players were playing at the very top level of Hearthstone. And I want to get your thoughts overall before we jump into some of this analysis on those two guys play. Yeah, I mean, that's the resounding impression of the series. It was just an incredible series played at an incredibly high level from both sides, you know, Backstage, off camera, everyone who was watching was just freaking out at random moments about how cool some of the plays were and how intuitive some of them were. So whoever won that series was going to go through to the final as a deserving finalist. Yeah, I, I definitely agree there. And a lot of it comes down to preparation at that point when the players are playing at such high level. So let, let's jump into the first clip here. Uh, this is one of those uh, sort of patience moments. Uh, we jump into the Shama game. This is game number one. Now, a lot of people were questioning this play. I know uh, even Rain out on the desk was right. curious as to why Nasa made this play. Uh, but walk me through the choices that he has here, Saddle, and what he inevitably decides to go with. Right, so the situation we have here is Nostum is just a little bit short of lethal. He drew that Flame Juggler on his turn. We're going to see him go ahead and tap and try and hit lethal on this turn. Doesn't pick it up. And then he's going to decide 
what to do with his play this turn. So what you definitely do not do here is play Arcane Golem and hit face. And the reason for that is that you activate the draws off your opponent's Acolyte by giving them something to trade into, and you remove out such as Abusive Sergeant and Flame Tongue Totem on a following turn for damage. The play that Raynad was advocating there was to send the Arcane Golem into the Doctor Boom, which buys you a ton more turns to then naturally draw the damage. He chose to play nothing, which was relying on a direct out of Abusive Sergeant, Flame Tongue Totem, etc. on the following turn. Yeah. But you'd have to really sit down and sort of evaluate the maths and the outs to decide which is the better line. But closing turns with aggro, always very intricate. Yeah, and it turned out that uh, Chess Dude had the, the means to draw anyway. Uh, so, right. But that's never information that you, you know as the opposing player. So uh, ends up losing that game because of the Sludge Belcher draw, but still a heads up play. Uh, so let's head into the next uh, moment that we have here. I believe we're going to head uh, into game number four. Now, this was a play that a lot of people, including the casters, were sort of freaking out about because of it, the, the read that Chess Dude makes here. So, Sato, once again, walk me through. All right, look, let's be very clear from the beginning here. What Chess Dude is doing here is not somehow divining the future and knowing that Innovate Emperor is about to come out and blocking it. What he does here is it's an acceptance of this is a matchup where, honestly, the Frost Nova Doomsayer combo isn't particularly reliable. They carry two silences in their deck. So the Frost Nova Doomsayer doesn't always go off. So it's a play that you can make for tempo to deny plays onto the board. So he's not looking, flipping his opponent's cards upside down in his mind and saying, oh, God, I have to block Innovate Emperor. But by playing the tempo Doomsayer here, he removes the option of a, a Keeper of the Grove getting good value. He potentially blocks a piloted Shredder. And just coincidentally, it's probably something he considered the threat of an Innovate Emperor this time. Yeah. But just coincidentally, that's what happened, but he's playing around things like Piloted Shredder and also the big Innovate plays. Yeah, and there's always the threat of Keeper when you're playing Druid. As the Freeze Mage in that matchup, it seems like you have to play proactively. Even though right. you're the reactive deck, it's a tough matchup, and you have to take risks like that. Yeah, absolutely. You have to really um, push the initiative. It's just the, the way of bad matchups in general. You have to take huge risks. You have to make unintuitive things that are further away from the norm. And that's exactly what Chess Dude was doing. And, you know, honestly, it was the one play of, out of any this entire weekend that everyone who was watching was just like, wow, that yeah. was insane. So, yeah, yeah crazy stuff. Yeah. Oh, well, thank you once again, Sadal, for your analysis for that match and on the day. The finals is set. It is going to be Amnesiac versus Nostum. We're going to give you a full breakdown of the day and what to expect going into that finals. But before we do that, check out some of these highlights from the last match. Kind of tell people.